Hello, welcome to PC Jack. Today, we're taking a look at everything we know so far about the newest memory standard in the form of DDR5. Should you be an early adopter, or is it better to wait? Let's find out. So, for those of you not aware, with the upcoming launch of Intel's Alder Lake, we will soon be seeing the first DDR5 supported platform to enter the market. With kits starting at 16GB and mega transfers per second leagues above DDR4, you may be thinking this is the perfect time to upgrade. While yes, DDR5 will have some advantages over its predecessor DDR4, there is a potential that this new platform will have some growing pains. So today, what we'll do is we'll take a look at DDR5, the specs and features that we're expecting, and some of the pros and cons of adopting this new memory standard. To start, DDR5 is actually already on the market. Team Group were actually the first manufacturer to actually release DDR5 memory kits, albeit slightly prematurely as no platform currently supports it as of yet. However, if we take a look at what Team Group have already revealed about DDR5, we get a bit of an idea of what's coming with this new generation. On their website they state, the initial launch of Team Group Elite DDR5 memory modules will support 16GB x 2 of capacity at a frequency of 4800MHz, with a voltage of 1.1V and CL404077. Now, one of the most disconcerting things about that statement is probably going to be those extremely high cast latency timings. However, it's important to note that this is very typical of new memory generations. If we take a look at this explanation comparing DDR3 to DDR4, it's explained that, while DDR4 RAM is newer with better storage density and power efficiency than DDR3 RAM, it tends to have higher cast latency. DDR3 RAM usually has a cast latency of 9 or 10, while DDR4 will have a cast latency of at least 15. However, because of its faster clock speeds, the newer standard has better performance overall. So while timings appear to be pretty high compared to DDR4, with the addition of much higher memory transfers per second ranging from 6400 MHz all the way up to 12600, this additional bandwidth should help negate any loss in performance due to the higher timings, and allow to double performance over a typical 3200 speed DDR4 kit. However, it does seem that this will come at a cost when it comes to power consumption. Another memory manufacturer, Corsair, have actually given some additional information on what we should expect with this new generation as well. To quote Corsair directly, they have explained DDR5 conceivably could run much hotter than DDR4, as they have moved voltage regulation off the motherboard itself, and now it is on the module. So you actually could be pumping a lot more heat. So with changing the voltage regulation from the motherboard directly to the memory, this could actually be an even better reason to have decent heat spreaders on your memory. And in this instance, it seems critical in maintaining performance, especially if ADATA have also been claiming to push 1.6 volts on their highest performing kits. It'll be interesting to see whether memory cooling will change significantly with this new DDR5 platform. However, it's something that more power conscious users may have to think about. So while it's pretty clear there's going to be some significant changes as we approach Intel's Alder Lake launch and the new launch of DDR5, I need to answer the main question which is, should you actually upgrade to DDR5? There is obviously the potential for this new platform to have some growing pains, but this is something we'll have to wait and see when Alder Lake launches later this year. However, this advantage that Intel has over AMD with being the first to market with DDR5 is also an advantage for AMD, as they'll be able to gauge any performance issues with Intel as they launch later this year, and better prepare for when Zen 4 launches with DDR5 too. Additionally, while DDR4 has fluctuated greatly over the years and is now at a relatively acceptable price level, DDR5 is going to be substantially more expensive first time around, so if you're on a budget, this may be something you'll have to think about. However, if you're looking to upgrade to Alder Lake and you already own DDR4, then LGA1700 will have multiple motherboards that still support DDR4. However, we will have to see what sort of performance uplift you get on Alder Lake with DDR4 compared to DDR5, but I'm sure this is something that'll be covered at great length at launch. But, what if you're on a platform that only supports DDR4? Well, if you're content with your current setup, then maybe you don't need to upgrade. In the PC enthusiast space, it's very easy to fall into the trap of believing that you need the newest and latest hardware in order to get the performance you need, when in actual fact, your current setup will probably last you much longer than you expect. Me personally, I'm using 32GB of 3200 speed memory in my main system, and along with the performance of the rest of my system, I don't really see the need to upgrade for quite some time. But if you aren't happy with your system's current performance, then of course upgrading to DDR5 is a worthwhile option. But it's important that you do your research and check for third party benchmarks to see whether it's actually worth upgrading from DDR4 all the way to DDR5. So 
That's it for today's video. Let me know your thoughts and whether you believe DDR5 is the way you're going to go. I'd love to hear what you'd have to say. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.